Good morning, everybody. Today is January 14th. I know some of you guys are having problems logging into Edge. If you log in through your CNUSD Clever account, then it's not going to let you log in at the moment. That way, if you go directly to Edge Annuity and you know your username and your password, you can also log in that way. I do not know when it is going to be fixed, so just keep checking it throughout the day. Sorry for any problems that it's caused. I mean, hopefully you get caught up. Um, so let me go ahead, let's start with, I'm gonna share my screen. So let's go ahead and start with problems from the quiz. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on problems again from the quiz that you guys are um, scheduled to take today. If at any point you have any questions, um, just put it into the chat. Um, but let's go ahead and let's rock and roll. So law of science, this is day three of law of science. Tomorrow we'll go into the law of cosines and this is focusing on the quiz. So these problems are taken from the quiz. However, it does not mean you're going to get these problems because it comes from a bank. So this just kind of helps you guys to see what type of thing, how they're gonna look, how they're gonna be worded. Um, and maybe you'll get the same one, you don't know unless you watch the video and then take your quiz. So. First problem, it says there are two possible triangles with the measures given for triangle ABC. So they give you this information. And remember that when I talked about using my law of signs, I want to set up the information for my triangles. Like what am I given? What do I have and what am I looking for? So I have my site A, it's triangle ABC. So I know it's gonna be ABC here. So I look here and I go, okay, well, I know my side B is 20.2, my side C is 18.3, my angle C is 38 degrees. It says, what are the possible measures for angle B? So this is what we're looking for. What are those possible measures? I don't know either my A values either, but in this case, they're only focusing on the B and I don't need the A's to find the B. So remember, law of science, I need to have a full set. So when we talk about a full set, I have a full set, that means I have the angle and the corresponding side. And that's exactly what I have. And in order to use the law of signs, if I'm looking for an angle or a side, I need to know one of the two for that other set. So in this case, I know my B so I can find this unknown angle B. So let's go ahead and look for it. So when I look here, I go, okay, 18.3 all over sine of 38 is equal to 20.2 all over sine of B, sine of B there. And I go, okay, well, this is my C, this is my angle C, this was my side B, and I'm looking for that sine of B. So again, this is what are the possible measures of B? They said that there are two possible triangles, so there's a big, a, a, a big clue right there that look for two angles. Um, so I go ahead and I'm gonna continue on. And I look and I go, okay, well, if I wanna solve for this angle B, I'm gonna cross multiply. And when I do that, I get 18.3 sine of B is equal to 20.2 sine of 38. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that 18.3 so I could get that sine of B all by itself. And I end up with sine of B. And I put this all in my calculator right here. This piece goes into my calculator. So I go 20.2, oh, this piece right there is better, 20.2 times my sine of 38 equals divided by 18.3, and I get this value of 0 0.67958, but I don't know what angle B is still. In order to find that B, remember, if you're looking for the angle, then you have to take the inverse of this value. So I need to take the inverse. And when I do that, I end up with B is approximately, so I, in my calculator, I leave that number there, and I do shift, and I do my sine inverse. Um, and then I do my answer down here. I have a little answer. So it takes that number that was previously in there and it plugs it right in for me. And then I hit equals and it tells me it's gonna be 42.8. For these, if you look at my answer choices, they're all gonna be the whole number 
and it also says random answer to the nearest whole number. So 42.8 is going to be 43 degrees. So I know my B is 43 degrees. But what is the other value of B going to be? Remember, two triangles. So this right here was for the first triangle. But what about the second? I should have written this a little bit smaller. I'm going to squeeze this in. I'll write it up here, actually. So for the second triangle, what is that going to look like? Well, I know A, B, C. This is my A, my B, my C. So for my second triangle, my 38 degrees is the same. Everything that's given here has to be the same. My 18.3 is the same. My 20.2 is the same. What's going to be different is all these pieces that were not given. We weren't given A, B, or the side A. So this A isn't going to be the same as this A. And that's where we use that special notation for that second triangle. We call these A prime, B prime, and my side A prime. That's just to note that they're not the same values. They're different. But here, my B and my two Cs here are going to be the same. So we label them the same. Kind of tricky. All right, so what if I know that my angle B is 43? That's what I found. If I know the side for the first triangle, then the second triangle angle is going to be its supplement. It means that they're both going to add to 180. So how do I figure out what that B prime is? Easy enough. It's going to be, so for my B prime, it's going to be 180 degrees minus my 43. And when I do that, I end up with 137 degrees. So this is 137 degrees. And you can see right here, there's my answer. Done, number one. Um, I knew there was gonna be two triangles. Um, remember, you can check for your two triangles using your, um, finding your H. Remember your properties here and how to determine there's no triangles one right triangle, a regular um, triangle, or two triangles. So, and then your value for H, if you recall, H is equal to B sine of A. And we're gonna see this more on here, so I didn't wanna spend the time to go ahead and do that. But remember, when you find this angle, right away, use that value to find your second angle, your prime of that given angle there. All right, a lot to cover today. Again, you have questions, make sure you let me know. Please, please, please. So for my next one, it says, Angelique draws a triangle. So she has triangle GHK. What is the length of H? All right, well, let's look at it. So I have triangle G, H, and K which means I have my side G, H, and K. So I fill in my values. Um, I like to look to see what am I given, my four and my 30 degrees. Okay, so what am I doing here? Why am I worrying about this? And then I need you guys to make sure, here's the tricky one with this one, makes it really tricky. It says, what is the length of H here? What is my length of H? When they talk about this H, sometimes you guys want to think it is going to be this H up here, this H here. And they're talking about, in this case, it's triangle GHK. They're talking about H as in this piece right here. So I kind of don't like that they chose that value of H because it makes it really tricky. Like, are we finding the height there or are we actually finding the value of H in the triangle, and they are talking about H in the triangle. Okay, so I look here and I go, okay, well, I have a, what I would call an angle, angle, side triangle, or sorry, a side, side, angle triangle, my SSA. I have an SSA triangle. Those are the ones that I said are a pain in my SSA, right? They're more difficult. Why are they more difficult? Because these, again, are the ones that I need to determine. How many triangles do I have? I can have more than one triangle for this, which means that I might have more than one H. Oh, man. So I've got to figure this out. How many triangles do I have? That's the first piece. 
So when we talk about the triangles, I use the values to compare my A and my H. And this H is talking about that height, not the H that they're looking for. I also need to know that B value. And so when we're not given my A and B straight out like that, it makes it hard for you guys to understand. So here's what I like to do. Here's a little method to look at it differently. It might help you guys. The one that has both pieces are your A's. So this would be my angle A, this would be my side A, then this other piece would be my B. So when I talk about my height H, so H is equal to my B sine of A, that is not talking about this length of this side H. This is talking about the height of a triangle H. So I could plug in these values to find that. And so this tells me then that H is equal to four times sine of 30 degrees. And when I plug that into the calculator, I end up with a value of two. So this tells me then that my A is three. So A is equal to three. My H is equal to two. So A is greater than H. So I know A is greater than H. It has to be one of these two options. So it means I need to look at my B value. So B is equal to four. My A is three, my B is four. So A is less than B is the second piece. So if A is less than B, that means I have two triangles. So from this information, I know we have two triangles which means those are gonna be out because I've gotta have two different measurements or two different triangles. The heights are not gonna be the same. If they were the same, you'd be creating the same triangle. So that means that I'm also going to have, so I will have, this as my first triangle. So this will be my first triangle. I'm gonna have a second triangle. So I would still have my same G is 30 degrees. My H is gonna be a different H. We call that H prime, K prime. So again, I don't know any of that. My G is still gonna be three. My H prime here, my second H value. And then my K is still gonna be four. All right, so again, in both of these, we wanna know then what is this H value? This is what we're looking for. That's what I wanna know. So let's go ahead and let's focus with the first triangle. Always start with the first triangle, find the missing angle, find the missing angle, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so how do I know which angle I'm gonna look for? Well, some of you guys think, well, let's look for H because I need the side H. The problem is, is that's two unknowns. So I need to find the angle that has at least one piece to it. So in this case, I know my side K, which means I need to use that to find my angle Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solve for this piece first. So for my angle K. So I have my full set right here. So I'm gonna do three all over sine of 30 is equal to four all over my sine of K. And when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cross multiply and I get three sine of K is equal to four sine of 30, and I'm divide both sides by three. And this tells me that sine of K is gonna be equal to, I go to my calculator and I'm gonna do four sine of 30 divided by three. And I get this 0.667. And I'm gonna take the inverse of this. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Whenever I'm looking for the angle, that's when I need to do my inverse. So I'm gonna do the inverse of my answer. So it's gonna tell me that K is going to be approximately 41.8. Okay, so remember, as soon as I find the one angle up here, I use that value to find that second angle, my second triangle. Not worried about anything else because this is often where you guys make your mistakes. So as soon as I find this K value here, I want to use that K value to find my angle for my second triangle. So this is gonna be then for my angle K prime. 
So remember, it's going to be 180 degrees minus my 41.8, and that's going to give me a value of 71.8. So this is going to be 71 point, um, sorry, that's not correct. Sorry, 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 that's, let me make this prettier. It, this is going to be 138.2. So this is going to be 138.2. I could fill in that this piece was going to be my 41.8. You guys are like, well, I'm not any closer to even finding out what I'm looking for. I'm looking for H. Problem is I couldn't solve for these H's until I figured out what this angle H is. And then some of you guys are like, well, I still don't know what angle H is. But that's easy now, because if I know two of my angles, then I can easily find that third angle. So going back here, so if I want for my angle H, I know that these two angles, I have add my 30 plus my 41.8 and I end up with 71.8. And then I do my 180 minus my 71.8 and I get 108.2. So this angle right here is 108.2. Very similarly, I do the same thing over here. So for my angle H prime, I take my G and my K prime, so my second triangle, I'm using those values. So it's going to be my 30 plus my 138.2. I add them together and I get my 168.2. And then I subtract that from my 180 and I get 11.8, 11.8. Okay, we're almost there. So this is one of those big triangles. This one, is the, this is the most work that you guys will see for any problem is when you have to find all the pieces and that might happen when you have two. So my last step then would be to find my H's for both of them. What are my H's going to be? So very similarly, for my side H, I have my full set still, that's gonna be Full set is the same for both. So I'm gonna focus on the um, side H in my tr first triangle first. So I'm gonna do my three all over my sine of 30 is equal to that H value over sine of 108.2. And I'm gonna cross multiply and I end up with H sine of 30 is equal to three sine of 108.2. Divide both sides by sine of 30. I plug it into my calculator and I get H is approximately 5.7. Very similarly, I'm gonna do that for my H prime and it's gonna be still my three over my 30. That's still the same full set. So it's gonna be three over sine of 30 is equal to my H prime all over sine of 11.8. And again, I cross multiply H prime sine of 30 is equal to three sine of 11.8. Divide both sides by sine of 30. And I end up with my H prime is approximately 1.2. So my two values here, I had H is 5.7 and I also have H prime is going to be 1.2. So here are my solutions. This was a tricky one. This is as worse as they come, the most work that they are. But again, understanding the concept and notice every time when I do these, I find my angle for the first triangle, that first missing one, and I use that to find that same corresponding angle in the second triangle. That's the way you guys kind of keep your information organized. Otherwise, the common mistake is, is that if you find this angle and you use it to find your H, then you guys want to do this value minus your 180 and you end up solving for the wrong angle and it won't come out right. So be careful. All right. Um, another 
I would say difficulty that you guys might come across is when you have things labeled like this, because we often talk to the uh, talk about the sides as like a lowercase uh, letter and not as a segment, but they're corresponding. So what I would do here is I would just draw some triangle. I know it's triangle A, B, C. So I would just draw triangle A, B, C so that it gives you a visual of, I know, okay, angle A is my 25 degrees. I know that this is 55 degrees, but I know that A, B segment, A, B is 60. So it's saying from A to B is my 60. It asks you, what are the, what are the appropriate measures of the remaining side? So my side B, C, my side BC is actually that corresponding value of A. My side AC is what we would call B. This side AB is my C value. So that kind of helps you guys to label it so you know, okay, how do I know which letters to put where? Um, again, that visual is really helpful. So let's go ahead and let's look at what information am I given? So I put it on my table. I know my 25. I don't know my angle B. I know my C is 55 how that angle B is really easy to find. So when you have this where the angle is easy to find, you don't have to worry about those ones being the more difficult ones. It's only when you're given one angle. When you're given one angle, those are the ones that are gonna be a pain in the SSA. So when I look at my sides, my side A, I don't know, my side B, I don't know, but I was given segment AB, which is my side C, which is my 60. So here's my information. I look to see, can I use the law of sines? Remember, we have to have a full set. It's different than when we go into our law of cosines tomorrow. So here's my full set. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solve for A first because I know my angle A. So here's how I would go about it. Um, so for a, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do uh, 60 over sine of 55 is equal to A all over sine of 25. All right, so let's go ahead and work this out. Cross multiply, I get A sine of 55 is equal to my 60 sine of 25. Divide both sides by sine of 55. I plug this all in my wonderful calculator and it tells me that A is going to be approximately, um, where's my answer? 31. So this is gonna be approximately 31. What is that telling me? It's telling me that BC is going to be 31. So I rounded it to the nearest whole number. Why? Because if I look at all my answer choices, that's what they were rounded to. So pay attention to that. Um, you're going to be given answer choices so you know, and they're not consistent. So these are all whole numbers for the sides. These ones, they rounded to the 10th. Uh, you just don't know. Okay, so I found that. Well, I also need to find my side B. So I know that this is going to be 31, but I don't know my side B or my angle B. Well, that's a problem because I have to know one of them. But then I remember, oh yeah, if I know two angles, I can find that third angle. So how do I go about finding that third angle? Well, remember they all have to add up to 180. So for my angle B, I go ahead and I add my 25 plus my 55 and I get 80. And then I take that 80 and I subtract it from 180 and it's gonna give me 100. So this angle is 100 degrees. Now they didn't tell me to find that, but I needed to know that I can easily find that. Now that I found that though, I can solve for my side B. Now that I know that I could go ahead and solve for my side B. And we already had our full set here. Go ahead and use the same one. I usually stick to the same one. However, you could use A now because you have that full set as well. So I just stick with the one that I've always, that I did the first problem with. So it's gonna be my 60 all over my sine of 55 is equal to, and I'm gonna do B all over sine of 100. I go ahead and I cross multiply. 
B times my sine of 55 is equal to 60 times sine of 100 divided by sine of 55. And this tells me that B is going to be approximately 72. So this IB here is approximately 72, which is also telling me that segment AC is 72. So this was my 72, so I matched up. BC is 31, AC is 72. BC is 31, AC is 72. So make sure that you mark the correct one. Notice how they have different combinations of the, the same numbers, but they're switched. So you need to make sure you know which segment you're talking about, otherwise you're gonna get it wrong. I'm almost done. Woo. We're on the home stretch, right? It's very repetitive in the idea of how to find them, um, but they do take some work. But you've got your calculator right there, so don't be too overwhelmed by it. Um, okay, so I'm asked, what is the perimeter vocabulary? Perimeter, remember, it's the distance around the triangle, the perimeter. What is the perimeter of the triangle below? Well, this is my side B again. I like to label things so I know, okay, well, what sides do I need to know? So I know that my side A is 50 degrees. I know my, or sorry, my angle A. I know my angle B is 60 degrees. They didn't tell me what C is, but I can figure that out easily. My side A, we don't know, but we need that to figure out the perimeter. My side B is 90 inches. Perfect. And my side C, I don't know that one either. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. How do I want to go about this? I need to figure out my two sides. Oh, I've got a full set. So I can go ahead and I can use my law of sines because I have a full set. So let's go ahead and solve for this A since I know my angle A. Easy peasy, right? So it's going to be 90 all over sine of 60 degrees is equal to my A all over my sine of 50 degrees. Cross multiply. A sine of 60 degrees is equal to 90 sine of 50 degrees. Divide both sides by sine of 60, by sine of 60. And I plug that into my calculator. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get that A is approximately 79.6 inches. So this is approximately 79.6 inches. 79.6 inches. My final answer is going to be here as a whole number. I don't like to round these values as a whole number yet because that can make it more off in my final answer. So if my final answer here is whole numbers, I usually go one decimal over. Whatever your answer is here, usually when you have multiple steps, you still want to go at least one decimal further than what is given. Okay, so this is for my A. So this was for my side A. So I, now I need to find my angle C, easy peasy. I add my two angles together, my 50 plus my 60, which is going to give me 110. I subtract that from my 180, and that's going to give me 70 degrees. So this is going to be a 70. Well, then to figure out my side C, I like to, again, use my um, set that I already started with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my 90 over my sine of 60 is equal to C all over sine of 70. I cross multiply and I'm gonna divide. So it's gonna be C sine of 60 is equal to 90 sine of 70. Divide both sides by my sine of 60. And I end up with C is approximately 97.7, 97.7, so 97.7. But again, I haven't even answered the question yet. If I want to know what is the perimeter, to find the perimeter, it is going to be my 90 plus my 97.7 plus my 79.6. And when I add them together, it's, it's going to equal 267.3. So 
So I look at my answers, 267, there it is. Done. So again, make sure you read the questions so you get to the final point. You're not just looking for one side. You needed to find all the sides so that you could figure out what the perimeter is. And my very last one, word problems. Those scare you. Just take it little by little, draw a picture to go with it. I like, again, a visual really helps me with word problems. Okay, so here's what's going on. It says two boats are equal distance from a lighthouse. So I have a boat here and a boat here with my lighthouse right here. So I'm gonna say, here's my little lighthouse, showing some light and here's my boat. Here's one boat, uh, my other boat. So I'm gonna call this point A, B and my lighthouse is point C, maybe a little. So it's saying they're equal distance from the lighthouse. It means equal distance means the same distance. So the distance from A to my lighthouse and B to the lighthouse is the same, whatever it is, it's the same. And I mark them congruent. It says that the boats are 30 miles apart. That means from A to B, that's 30 miles. The angle formed between the two boats and the lighthouse of the vertex measures a 40 degree angle. So let's, let's Think about what this is saying. It says the angle formed between the two boats, so between the two boats and the lighthouse. So between the two boats and the lighthouse, they're talking about this angle right here. That angle is 40 degrees. Then it says approximately how far is each boat from the lighthouse? Okay, well, what information do I have? Okay, so A, B, C, A, B, C. I know this is my side C, so I know my angle C is 40 degrees. I know my side C is 30 miles. Okay, what I'm looking for is the measure of the boat to the lighthouse. Approximately how far is each boat from the lighthouse? Well, remember, it said that they're the same distance. So whatever this is, this has to be. The other thing that's interesting is, and this kind of goes back to um, probably math two maybe, um, is that if these two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite them are also going to be congruent. So my angle A, my angle B have to be the same. So I don't know what they are, but here's what I do know. If they, all three have to add to 180, and I know one of the angles is 40, then these two angles have to add to that 140. And if they're the same, then I'm just gonna divide that by two. And that tells me that each of those angles is going to be 70 degrees, right? So I wasn't given this. And even though I had two unknowns, I could still solve it out because the two unknowns are congruent. What's also great about this is that these two sides are the same. So I only need to solve for one of them. So here's how I would go ahead and do this. I look and I go, sweet, I have a full set right here of my angles and my side C. So I'm gonna do 30 all over sine of 40. And you can pick to solve for A or B, doesn't matter because they're the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna solve for that A, which will be my X. So it's gonna be X over sine of 70, cross multiply, so it's X sine of 40 degrees is equal to 30 sine of 70. Divide both sides by sine of 40, by sine of 40. And I get X, I plug this all in my calculator. Oops, plug it in my calculator and I get that it's gonna be approximately 44 miles. So these two signs are going to be about 44 miles each. There you go. And there we have it. That was our last one I have for today. If you guys have any other problems as you're working through your quizzes, let me know. You get one retake. Um, if you need a third retake, you will have to message me and let me know. And I can allow that. Um, that's only the case for 
um, quizzes, not for tests. Um, so again, uh, if you need extra help, if you don't pass after two chances, it's going to lock you. You're going to need to message me, um, and then I can either move you on, you can take your current score, or I can go ahead and give you one more retake. But I'd like for you to be able to study and watch the videos um, before you do that. So if you have any other questions, please go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow.